This is Stafford Green White Checker. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this first ever edition of Stafford Green White Checkered. I am your host and your Stafford insider, Darren Ayotte, where we, where we will be breaking down every Friday night of racing for you at Stafford Motor Speedway. We will have up to date racing news, a detailed analysis of each division of racing, and exclusive highlights and driver interviews. We will also have guests on the show from time to time to give us their thoughts on what went on that night at Stafford. So let's get started with the Stafford Headlines of the Week for Military Appreciation Night at Stafford Motor Speedway. The big story of the night took place during the SK Modified feature, where the number six of Ryan Priest chose the outside lane on the final restart, ultimately costing him the victory, as the number 88 of Keith Rocco would go on to get the win and maintain his points lead. In this week's limited late model Extra Mart Extra D feature event, points leader Al Saunders took home his second win of the season utilizing the extra five laps to take the lead. And finally, rookie Matt Swanson gets his first career SK Lights victory in the SK Light Modified feature. We will have more on Swanson later on in the show. It's now time for your race recap from a wild night at Stafford. We begin with a legend cars feature, where points leader Dana DiMatteo would be collected in a wreck at the very start of the race. So who would take home the victory in this caution-filled race? As they stomp down the front straightaway, O'Connell running out of time. Corey DiMatteo can taste the victory. No question about it. Corey's done a masterful job. He's guarded the lead. He's maintained the lead. And in less than a turn, he'll visit Napa Victory Lane, the winner of our first feature event of the night. Finishing in second, Devin O'Connell. Chris Fuller, great run to finish in third. Yeah, that was a great race. Devin came through the field real fast, and I knew he was probably the only one that had something for me because my brother got wrecked on the front stretch there. But uh, kind of just got to the lead as soon as I got to the lead. I was looking in the mirror way too much. I said, I'm going to lose this race. So I flipped the mirror up and just drove. I don't know who the hell was around. So it would be his brother, Corey DiMatteo, getting the win, his second of 2015, as we take a look at the rest of the top 10 from that feature event. Of course, Corey DiMatteo, the only driver with a top five in every race this season, followed by Devin O'Connell, who tried all race to get around the, four, the 75 car, but was unable to do so. How about Kyle Rogers, his third top five of the season? Christopher Fuller gets his first top five of the season, finishing fourth. It was a good points day for him. And rounding out the top 10, Mikey Flynn and the 03 car of Katarina Labella, both spun out early, but managed to get back into the race and both come home with a top 10 finish. And of course, Dana DiMatteo though, was the story of the race who ended up coming home 12th in that lap one wreck. Let's now give you the updated point standings after six races in the 2015 Legend Car season. And as you can see, a big change at the top of the standings. Corey DiMatteo leapfrogs Devin O'Connell and his brother Dana to take the lead. Devin O'Connell just two points behind. And as you can see, Dana DiMatteo goes down to third, 12 points behind. A big hit for him in the standings there. We'll see if he'll be able to recover. And how about Christopher Fuller moving up a position to sixth? And Katarina Labella able to round up the top 10, gaining a spot with her 10th place finish in that feature event. On to the late model feature, where more championship contenders were taken out early in Rex. And a year-long winless streak was finally put to an end. White flag is out. It's been a long time coming. Tommy Fern is back on top of his game. Final time through turn number two. Final time down the back straight away. First time out of the box with a brand new sponsor for Sarah Ford. Tommy Fern is back and winning here at Stafford in the late model. He will take down the victory. What a comeback for Tommy Butler in second. Well. We got a new sponsor this week, Sarah Ford from Agua Mass. Anybody want a new Ford truck or car, go to Sarah Ford. They also have Lincoln, so. Um, got it, I said, we put that on this car this week, maybe it can change our luck, and uh, apparently it did. So we got good uh, good news back to him uh, when we get home and uh, tell him that we uh, won with his Ford logo on the back. And uh, Safeco Foam, Stu Fern, uh, can't thank them enough. He just got here from his daughter's uh, graduation, so I'm glad he could be here. He's our car owner and uh, number one uh, man behind the money, I guess. So the number 92 car of Tom Fern is back in victory lane for the first time since June of 2014. Certainly a rejuvenating win for him. And here's a look at the rest of the top 10 from last night. Of course, Tom Fern getting the win. 
And how about Tom Butler? What a bounce back finish for him, finishing in the, in the second position after finishing 11th last week. Jim Mavlajanez, four starts and four top fives this season for him. Of course, Josh Wood came home fourth, another solid day for him. Rookie Chase Cook with his first top 10 of the season in eighth. And Michael Ray and Michael Bennett both were involved in a wreck on lap 16, but Michael Bennett was actually black flagged for his involvement, and he wound up 10th. And of course, he was the points leader. So that is a big deal. And now we'll take a look at the standings for the, limit, uh, for the late model. And as you'll see, Michael Bennett did take a bit of a hit in the standings, but check out Tom Butler going up three positions to second, just 12 points back. Michael Bennett will maintain his lead, though. Kevin Game McCorder drops down two positions. Michael Scorzelli goes down one in their, from their wrecks. And Jim Mavlajanas, Tom Fern, and TJ Zarella all moved up a spot in the standings. So it's time for the Limited Late Model Extra Mart Extra D Feature Event. The Extra D gave the Limiteds an extra five laps to decide the winner, and those laps would pay off for Al Saunders in the end. Take a look. White flag is out, Matt. One lap to go. Cliff looking to take a shot against his twin brother. They are almost crazy glued together as they go down the back stretch. Look at Albert Saunders holding off Cliff. They go into turn number three, and Albert is in control. It is twin night here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. To the line they come, and Albert Saunders will take down the win. His twin brother, Cliff Saunders, to finish in second. Yeah, thanks to Extra Mart for putting this race on. Uh, I really like the extra distance races, so this is a really cool event to win. Uh, it was a night full of problems. I uh, hit the wall pretty hard off turn two. Uh, one of the first couple laps there, then got a bad restart, and then uh, the brakes actually started going. As soon as I would touch the brake pedal, the would go right to the floor. So it last probably 10 laps or so, I had no brakes. So I uh, was glad to hang on and get the win. Uh, cool that my brother got second. Uh, I think he was a little bit better than me at the end, but it's really cool to get second win of the season and uh, extend the point lead. Just like last week, both Saunders brothers had to work their way from the rear of the field. And unfortunately, last week, they were not able to get up there in time as there were no cautions in the race, but the cautions this time, plus the extra five laps, really made a difference for them to allow them to finish one, two. As we take a look at the rest of the top 10 from that 25 lap feature. And of course, Al Saunders, Cliff Saunders, the top two, finishing one, two once again. Fourth top five of the season for Cliff Saunders. And how about Andrew Hayes and Austin Bissett in third and fourth, both with six starts and five top fives on the year. And how about Robert Blocks from the third, the rookie down in seventh place, his first top 10 of the season. And of course, Jeremy Lavoie and RJ Serdell round up the top 10 from the Limited Late Model Extra Mart Extra D feature event. So let's check out the updated Limited Late Model point standings now as they run after six of 23 races. And as you can see, Al Saunders and Austin Bissett still won two. In fact, there really are no changes at all through the first eight. Mostly uh, no changes whatsoever. David and Paul Root got a little bit closer, just 14 points apart. The only difference was David Como, the rookie, dropping one spot, and Justin Bren gaining a spot into 10th. Let's shift gears now to the SK Lights. The 20 lap feature saw a rookie, who has already made a name for himself this season, get his first win of his SK Lights career. Take a look. We are down to the final lap. The moment of truth for a rookie driver, Matthew Swanson, looking for his first ever SK Light victory. Down the back straightaway, he came, he saw, and will he conquer? Two turns to get the job done. Matt Swanson has arrived. He will visit Napa Victory Lane. Off turn number four, it is Swanson to take down the win. Finishing in second, DJ Burnham. Feels awesome. You know, a couple years ago, I was just a little kid in the stands watching SKs every Friday night. Last week, we got in a bad wreck. Uh, Kenny, Jason, Art, my dad, everyone was there this last weekend helping us put a rear clip on it and to come back and get a victory. It's awesome. Well, it was an incredible night, to say the least, for rookie Matt Swanson, who gets his first career SK Lights victory. The celebration was on. I spoke to him afterwards in the paddock area, and he could not believe how excited he was. Really, really excited. And in fact, let's take a look at the rest of the top 10 first before we get back to Matt Swanson. And as you can see, DJ Burnham, another second place finish. His fifth top five in six races so far. And how about Joey Farino, our points leader? Two wins and four top fives in 2015 so far. Glenn Griswold finished in seventh. So a third and a seventh now for Glenn Griswold. A nice two bounce back races after a rough start to the season, getting involved in some wrecks and just had some plain bad luck. 
and Jay Goff would round out the top 10, a solid 10th place finish for him. Now let's see how that shaped up the SK Light point standings. And as you can see, Joey Farino still in the lead right now, just four points ahead of DJ Burnham, who continues to knock on the door. Rookie Matt Swanson moves himself into third in the standings. He's looking to be, become one of the only rookies to win the SK Light Championship in quite some time, just 18 points back. Jeff Beaujolais lost a spot as a result of Swanson's win. And how about all the way at the bottom? Check out Peyton Henry in 10th, gaining four spots in the standings with a solid top 10 finish. Well, it's on to the drama, to say the least, the SK Modified feature. The drama, of course, came on the final restart of lap 35. After a back and forth battle between the six of Ryan Priest and the 88 of Keith Rocco, Priest elected to choose the outside lane on the restart, not normally seen at Stafford Motor Speedway, which was stunning to say the least. Rocco had no problem taking the lead straight into turn one and winning the race. White flag is out, final circuit. It's not over with yet. And will Priest be close enough to make a move down under the 88? Here he comes, turn number two. Rocco still has the advantage, but Priest is not giving up. Down into turn number three. Rocco still the leader. Priest is reeling him in. They come off the turn, down to the line. Rocco guards the spot. It's Rocco to take down the win. Ryan Priest to finish in second. Matt Galco to finish in the third spot. Oh, uh, you know. I think sometimes I just worry about too much about practice times, you know. Uh, you know, we ain't setting fast time in practice, but when it comes time to drop the green, this, uh, this Northeast race car's Troyer chassis is, uh, is awesome. You know, we, uh, we raced right through the front. Despite the decision, Ryan Priest would come home second, and he had a good run at Keith Rocco, but was unable to get to his back bumper at the end of the race. And as you can see now, the rest of the top ten as they ran from that feature event, this 40 lap event, race number six. And check out Ryan Priest, fourth top five of the season. Despite a win, he is very close. As I spoke with him, we'll get to that in just a moment, but how about Rowan Pennick finishing in seventh? You, you only see him in the top five. He had some trouble working his way from the back of the pack and just got caught in some traffic. Was never really able to recover. And Woody Pitcat in fourth gets his first top five of the season. Justin Bonsignor rounds out the top 10 in 10th. With that win, though, Keith Rocco extends his points lead to 14 over Ryan Priest. And after the race, I spoke with Ryan Priest on his decision to take the outside lane as opposed to the inside lane. Ryan Priest comes home second in the SK Modified feature. And Ryan, everybody wants to know why you chose to choose the outside lane instead of the inside on that restart. Um, I mean, the, the restart before that, I almost went from first to third. So I, I knew I wouldn't have anything on the bottom. So. I figured even if he did run me up, I'd be in second and put myself in position to, to get him back. It's just these tires, uh, second week we ran them and they really hardened up on us. So we, we know we have a really good car. I'm happy. Second place, great day. Uh, cars in one plate, one piece. And, uh, you know, obviously I have great supporters. They want to get to victory lane as bad as I do, but it just wasn't uh, – it just wasn't. Um, it just wasn't our night tonight. East West Marine. I got to thank them. Sullivan and Sons, uh, Mizzy Construction, Napa of Canton with Gary Barnes, um, uh, Sunoco Race Fuels, Loctite, FK Rada, and Sean Woodhill Communications. Everybody involved. Yo, hold on. I know. Brian Priest talking to one of his crew members right now with the tires. A lot of commotion going on here in the paddock right now. A lot to talk about. See if we can get Ryan back here. No, no problem, no problem. It's a lot going on in the paddock, so Ryan's busy. We're gonna let him go in a second, but I don't just touching my special tires here. Oh <laughs> uh, well, hey, they they were good. They were good tonight. You and Keith had a great battle, just like last week in the Valenti series. Uh, talk about how nice it is to have a battle with a guy like that. Another Berlin guy. Hey, yeah, we're neighbors. Um, yeah, it's it's racing. You know, we, we were racing hard, and I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of hard racing to come, but. Uh, you know, like these guys right here, if you put the camera on these guys right here, this is the reason why uh, why we run as good as we do. Uh, you know, everybody usually comes out at least one day to the shop and helps me out. And and uh, and then me and Mike on, on Thursday setting this car up. Uh, he's been he's really been on his A game. We're, we're getting there little by little. This car has been, you know, a lot better than we were last year. We've been making a lot of gains, but the unfortunate thing is so is everybody else. So we're getting there and, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, Hopefully we'll be in victory lane soon enough. All right, thanks, Ryan. Thank you. All right, Brian Priest second in the SK Modified feature and what was a very eventful day here at Stafford Motor Speedway. 
the Extra Mart Extra D was also today, and Military Appreciation Night. I also spoke with Keith Rocco and Matt Galco after the race, and both of them told me the same thing. They were very shocked to see that he chose the outside lane. Very unaccustomed to not normally see that at Stafford Motor Speedway in any division of racing there. But nonetheless, a bold move from Ryan Priest just did not pay off in the end. So here's the top 10 in the standings after six of 23 races. And as you can see, Keith Rocco remains up top 14 points ahead of Ryan Priest, followed by Rowan Pennock, who is 18 points behind. He loses a spot to Ryan Priest with his seventh place finish. And Glenn Reen remains in fourth. But how about Matt Galco? We just talked about him. He finished in third, a plus four in the standings for Matt Galco. A great, great points day for him. Joey Cipriano gained the position. Todd Owen, plus three as well. And Dan Avery rounding out the top 10, 66 points behind. It's a pretty, pretty close race so far, though. 10 guys all within 66 points. Of course, the max points you can get for one race is 50. So that'll be something interesting to take a look at as the weeks go on. So on to the final recap of this show, and that's the Dare Stock. What has already been a neck and neck points race gets even tighter after this 15 lap feature. Take a look. White flag is out, one circuit to go. Latois still holding on for second, Tyler Trott in third, and Alexandra Fern with a late event charge from scratch is up to the top four. Final two circuits, down into turn three. And here comes Trace Meyer trying to put the exclamation point on this one. Latois is behind him, and here comes Meyer as he is able to get the win with Latois second. I got so many people to thank. I got to thank my dad for uh, making a trip here every week to, to race. I got to thank Joe. Puts an amazing setup in this car. The thing was unstoppable. Uh, I got to thank my Aunt Shirley for always being here. Um, Mr. Robson for always helping out. Uh, I wish a happy birthday to my brother Todd. I also have to thank my other brother Terry for helping out with the car during the week. So there you have it. Trace Byer gets his second win of 2015 and picks up 12 points in the standings. But here's a look at the top 10 from the Dare Stock feature. It was a 15 lap feature, as always. And a great run for quite a few drivers. <laughs> First of all, Trace Byer, of course, with the win. But how about Frank Latois Jr.? Six starts and six top fives. He's really making a name for himself. Of course, that's your defending series champion in the 33 car. Tyler Trott gets his fourth straight top three finish. That's really something there. Alexandra Fern comes home fourth. She's been a solid top five driver all year long. Marcello Rufrano gets fifth, the rookie. You'll notice quite a few rookies actually in this division, but how about Dan Dembeck? That's the biggest thing to know here, the 93 car. He was your points leader. He gets his worst finish of the season in seventh. That really tells you how strong he's been all season long for his worst finish to be in seventh. Paul Borden Jr. rounds out the top 10 in the 62 car, and a good run for Brian Granger, who comes home ninth. So how did that play a part in the point standings? Of course, that's what we all want to know after what a race that was. Well, this is the closest points race right now at Stafford Motor Speedway among all the divisions. As you can see, Dan Dembeck is in a dead tie with Tyler Trott at the top of the standings, with Frank Latois Jr. just two points behind, Trace Byer just six points behind, not a lot of movement among the standings, but check that out. That is a close race with four drivers just within six points. That is the equivalent of three positions on the racetrack. It's gonna be really interesting to see how that goes on over the next few weeks. And as you can see, Marcello Rufrano and a few other rookies rounding out the top 10 in the standings, still having a solid year. Not a lot of changes though. Just Zach Robinson moving over Nicole, Sh Nicole Shambrello for sixth position. We will now end the show with our Stafford Rookie of the Week. And of course, this week's winner is the number 89 SK Lights car, Matt Swanson. Swanson won his first SK Lights feature event of his career and now sits third in the point standings, just 18 behind first placed Joey Farino. So a great week for Matt Swanson. We look forward to seeing him next week as well. Well, that's going to do it for this first edition of Stafford Green White Checkered. For our producer, Antonio Squiteri, and on behalf of the entire crew here at Nutmeg TV, I am your host, Darren Ayotte. And we look forward to seeing you next week on Stafford Green White Checkered.